Okay, we have a question from Nathan. Nathan asks this question. What, what's the best way to build cardio capacity? Uh, Maffy Tone Work, Hill Sprints, HIT programs, uh, uh, Insanity Training program. Uh, the best way to build cardio capacity, uh, I'm a, let's come at this in a couple ways. First, I think it's really important that if you're male, you donate blood because we know we've been, uh, the Mary and Dan Eads point out very well that for males, donating blood uh, brings down the hematocrit level, which seems, uh, I like what they say is that uh, iron is rusting your, uh, your, your blood serum apart or something like that. But for heart health, uh, for men, uh, donating blood is good. So I'm talking about heart health first. Uh, we know that good dental care, flossing and good dental care, go see the dentist, take care of issues, is also really important for your heart health. Uh, we also know that not if you can have uh, keep your waistline either at or below half your body height. So, you know, in, in my case, you know, it's six foot, I should be at 36 inches or less. And of course, the joke, I always say, my problem is I'm too short. <laughs> So, you know, keep your body weight down as appropriate. Uh, uh, we know from the, some research that getting over certain numbers, and it's, a, and, uh, it's 300 pounds for most people, uh, basically about 137 kilos. Once you put your body mass at a certain numbers, it seems to be a lot harder on your heart. Why did I want to start with that first? Because I think sometimes we get so caught up in cardiovascular discussions about, you know, running marathons or 10Ks or, you know, cross-country skiing, and that's all good. But we forget the fundamentals and the foundation. Uh, right now, I'm doing cardiovascular training because my heart is beating. <sighs> the best way to build cardiovascular conditioning is never, never lose it. Um, you know, if you're around, uh, as I am, my grandchildren, uh, Little kids have massive cardiovascular conditioning. And uh, it, it's fascinating if you follow them at amusement parks, like I do with my grandchildren. Uh, for every step I take, they take two or three uh, with my uh, grandson, Leo, who's not even two. For every step I take, he takes, it seems like he takes 15. And so, you know, I'll, I'll look down sometimes, I'll walk him. I have about a quarter mile, 400 meter uh, block here, and I'll take him a little walk. And... When we get back, you know, you'll see his cheeks all reddening up. Uh, the idea, because, you know, he's, he's huffing and puffing. It's a hard little workout for him. Um, I want to always start there when, when someone talks to me about cardiovascular conditioning, because I would suggest that most people, um, until they discover uh, the Internet, uh, television, uh, phones, uh, you know, reruns of crappy TV shows, uh, they have pretty good cardiovascular <laughs> abilities and they kind of just give it away on the couch, so to speak. Um, I used to uh, go to high school football practice, come home, eat dinner, and then go play catch with my friends for a couple hours or play pickup basketball games. The coaches hated it. We loved it. We had plenty of engines. Now, so now let's go to the third step. How do we build it uh, as adults? First off, I still think that walking is still the most underrated way to build cardiovascular conditioning. And I apologize uh, that I talk about it all the time, but I can't talk about it enough. Uh, it would, when I go to Europe, when I go to New York, uh, my good friend Jeff Hemingway always jokes that the first thing that happens when you move to New York is you lose 10 pounds because you start walking everywhere. Uh, you probably... You know, when I'm teaching at St. Mary's, I think I get about twelve to 15,000 steps a day. When I come home from St. Mary's, I'm, and it's only a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, when I come home, I'm clearly in better shape. Of course, then I move, get back here to Utah, which is one of the hardest places in the world to walk in some areas uh, because the blocks are so far. And, you know, I can, I'd can i have to walk, walk a long, long ways on, on fairly busy traffic to get to a bar. I have I walk into the grocery store. I have to cross a lot of dangerous streets and it's not always the best thing in the world. So walking. Then after that, let's, you know, let's kind of reshape our conversation here a little bit. If you take care of business, 
and you take care of the big, the, you know, go to the dentist, go to the doctor, you know, that kind of thing. You, you floss your teeth, you, you go for walks. From there, we'll move up. Uh, personally, I'm a big believer in something called power laws. So I still believe that the bulk of your cardiovascular sh work should be long, slow distance. Not the garbage miles that we were talking about in the 70s, but things like walking. Uh, I have many of the people I work with do something called fartlek. Uh, that it's the Swedish word for speed play. And that means you go, maybe go up to the mountains, uh, you run up hills, you walk down hills, you maybe, you know, glide when it's appropriate. If you have a golf course near you with those natural highs and lows, that's a perfect place to do this. Um, if you have a park course near your house, those are those places where you can either walk, run, or jog between stations. And you do push-ups at one station, pull-ups at the next station, step-ups at the next one, stretch your shoulders at the next one. I think those are really valuable. If you want to be an elite athlete, we then have to move into uh, that other side a little bit more seriously. And that, of course, is this, the and that, of course, is the area of the intense stuff. For everyone listening, you probably should walk a lot and do some intense work. If you want to be an elite athlete, you've got to increase that intense workout more. And folks, that's, that's the difficult thing. Uh, when I was young and we did track practice, uh, one of the best ways I thought that got us into shape for running was a style of running where we got into groups and... Uh, we had to be in one line, about 10 of us. And when you got to the back of the line, your job was a sprint to the front. And then you, we just kept the pace. And then the whole time you're running, the person in the back was sprinting to the front. <clears throat> when they got in the front, the person in the back sprinted to the front. <clears throat> so you mix this easiest running with hard running. And I think that's the best way to go. I hope that answers your question. Thank you.